excited to invite Noe Rizzo on to the next 24 hours. He is an up-and-coming YouTube star. He has an amazing, personal, touching story about his journey from high school through college and beyond. And he is a personal friend of mine. You don't want to miss this episode of The Next 24 Hours with Noe Rizzo. Welcome to The Next 24 Hours, where I'm going to give you real information you can really use to transform your life and work one day at a time. I'll be your host, Curtis Zimmerman. Well, I'm very excited to welcome on The Next 24 Hours our guest, Noe Rizzo, Now, Noe has a YouTube channel called Wolfpack. He's going to be graduating very soon with his master's degree in communication from Western Michigan University, where we met years ago. Good morning, and how are you doing, Noe? Fantastic. I'm so grateful for you to have me here, so thank you. Oh, man, I'm so excited to have you on the program. And, you know, we've met several times. We've talked several times. And I thought before we get into kind of your story, I would love to talk a little bit about just kind of how how we met. And the first time uh, you saw me at Western Michigan University, you were in the audience and kind of Where you were at that point, some of the changes you already made in high school, I know you made a big lift to change your your kind of circumstance and your trajectory in life, and then you saw my program, and then we'll take it from there after that. But if you would just give us kind of that intro, I'd love for people to know why you're on the program and how we met. Of course, 100%. No, so... The story of how we met is amazing. I It holds a very special place in my heart because like you said, it was probably one of the most influential moments in my life. You know, I had just gotten to college. Um, I had just decided that I wanted to completely pivot and take a different direction um, from where I was going in high school. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, but I knew, you know, I was in college. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to just change myself, be a different person. Um, but I didn't really have any direction. And then there you are on stage doing your speech, doing your thing. You know, we're having fun. We're juggling some balls. And, you know, you were just so interactive with the audience. And your your story was so special. Um, just everything that you were able to change about yourself got me thinking, man, like that kind of change is the change that I want. Right. So I want to see what what can I do with his message four years from now? Right. So I, I, I took your message as well as honestly, the idea of like, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But when I first saw you up there, I was like being up on stage, being able to share my story and potentially change people's lives the way that he has influenced me right now. That would be amazing. So for the rest of the four years, I was like, OK, so like, what can I do to change my life to be my best self and be someone I'm proud of? Um, and what can I also what can I do to influence other people as well the, the way that he is? Um, but that I mean, that was when we, we first when I first saw you, I guess. But when we first met would have to be, I think it was two years after, you know, I was, I was a sophomore by then. I was two years into college and I was organizing. Um, I was part of the committee that was organizing uh, Fall Welcome, which is, you know, the initiation. Um, sorry, not initiation. New student orientation. Yeah, that new student orientation. Um, and I was planning some events and being around. um uh, I was one of the people who was planning some of those events. I got to meet with you backstage and, you know, talk, talk a little bit about that. But actually, that, that was the first time we met in person. I remember before that, um, you and I had a phone conversation because right after I saw you on stage, I think it was two, three days, I looked you up online, tried to get your contact info. And I sent you an email or your, your team an email. And I was like, hey, just saw Curtis Zimmerman. I, is there any way that I could talk to him? Because what he's doing, that's what I want to do with my life, you know, and I want to know what can I do in the next four years to potentially be doing what he's doing once I graduate. Um, and then from there was all history. Cause like you, that's when you, you contacted me back. We had our first phone call. Um, but I think that's when we officially kind of, you know, that's when we met in person. It was a couple of years later, but the first time we talked was through the phone and that was amazing. That is amazing. And I would just say <clears throat> so important to everyone that's listening. And that is, you know, oftentimes I have people call or after I'm done with my program, I have people come up and say, 
Hey, I want to be a speaker. Hey, what do I do to be a speaker? And I'm always willing to take that first call. I'm always willing to say, you know, I'm going to jump on the phone with the person. I'm going to put in 20 minutes, a half an hour, talk to them and give them here are two or three steps you're going to want to take in order to make that dream. If that's truly a dream in order to make that come true. And that's normally the last time I ever hear from that person. I never hear from them again. And the reason you're on the podcast is because that was the beginning of a relationship and the beginning of many other conversations and the beginning of you jumping off the cliff to continue down the path. And I'm excited to have played a small part of that along the way. And we'll get into some of the other things like Speakable You when you came to the actual three-day retreat that we put on with all adults and like all, you know, executives and crazy people. And there you were as a college student going, no, I'm coming and I'm going to crush it. And so for me, it's just so important that everyone's listening understand that mentorship isn't just somebody taking you on, under your wing and then doing things, but it's about what that person does because you had to do all the work. And that's the thing I want to make perfectly clear as we go through the path today is, is that this gentleman that we're talking about now isn't afraid to do all the work in order to make the dreams come true. So uh, when you check out Wolfpack, which is his YouTube channel, you're going to see in the background he has a sign up that says living the dream on it. And it's amazing. But the reason he has it up and the reason he is doing what he's doing is because he's done all the work as well. And that's critical to the success. So one of the things that I know when you were in high school, you were kind of shy and kind of, you know, reserved and kind of held on to, you know, staying safe. And talk, talk us through from that to what happened your senior year and the change that happened, because I think this is just so important for everyone to hear. It doesn't matter if you're in college. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, getting your master's degree. It doesn't matter if you're five years into your job or you're getting ready for retirement. You can always change the next chapter of your life. So talk to us a little bit how you did that and the mindset behind that. Of course. Oh, man, that's crazy. It's, it's again, it's such a big, big part of my life and I think a big part of my story. Um, so I'm glad I get to talk about it here with you. So again, back in high school, I was extremely shy, very, very introverted. Um, I was, I would get so anxious when being around other people um, that it would affect me in ways that, you know, it was unnormal, I felt like. Um, I didn't really have a good group of friends. You know, I was, I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but what I, something that I did know was that I wasn't happy with where I was at, right? I, I, I lived my, uh, my life in constant fear fear of change, fear of, you know, trying to go for anything that I wanted, right, for the feel of failure. And honestly, fear of judgment, you know, I was a very insecure person at the time. And I just was like, I don't want to suddenly change in front of other people, because they're going to be like, what, why are you, why are you changing now? So I saw my opportunity. Um, I, let's see, I think it was when I turned, it was when I turned 18. Um, you know, 17, 18, around that time that I looked myself in the mirror, and I was like, I'm not the person that I want to be, right? You know, I, I've always been very ambitious and I've always had these big goals, but at some point while growing up, like fear stopped me from, from achieving those things. And when I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, again, I was like 17, 18, I was like, this is not who I want to be. This is not the person that I, you know, thought I would be at this age. And then right around the same time was when I graduated from high school and I was like, okay, I need to make a change. You know, I, I, this isn't who I want to be. And going into college, it, it was like a brand new start for me. I was like, nobody knows who I am. I can be whoever I want to be. Now, the issue was all those fears and insecurity, that, that was all still there. That didn't just go away with me saying like, okay, I'm going to go be someone who I'm proud of. Um, when I go in, went to college, I took those four years to push myself to do anything that felt uncomfortable, starting off with just having conversations with random people um, on campus. Uh, and I remember I would have this little routine in my head where I would go, okay, uh, I'd close my eyes, I'd take a deep breath and I'd say one, two, three, and I'd be like, hey, you know, what, what's your name? Um, and usually it, the, the hardest ones were, is when I would talk to people who, you know, were just kind of walking around um, to a class or something and we, we, we'd be walking the same direction. So I'd be like, okay, clearly we're, we're kind of headed the same way. We have quite a bit of a walk. Um, those are probably the hardest encounters, but pushing myself to do things like that, 
um, getting involved in organizations. I, I didn't like to be around people. I didn't like to be involved in anything. So that's that one of the first things that I did was like, OK, let's go join a club. You know, let's let's go join, you know, a sports club or something. Um, so for the next four years, I just kept pushing myself to talk to people and to be more open, because at the end of the day, like the person who I am now it's always been me. I've always been silly. I've always been a little bit quirky. I like to have fun. I love to talk to people, but it was that fear of, of, of judgment. And I don't know what exactly happened to me growing up, but I just, you know, I couldn't get past that. But the moment that I said, all right, I'm going to make a change. I had to put in the work. I had to put in the, the time to make myself feel uncomfortable, to put myself in those positions to the point where four years later, um, everyone who knew me, you know, they knew me as this most outgoing, super friendly person. Um, and when I used to tell them, like, hey, fun fact, back in high school, I used to be super, super shy. They're like, no, like, I don't see that. Like, how is that possible? Um, but I would I would have to say that the, the moment that I really feel like I made it, um, it's not like I hadn't set any specific goal. You know, the goal was just to change. And I didn't set any bar where it was like, oh, once I make it here, I know that I made it. But life had a funny way of just kind of presenting it to me. And it was a huge eye opener to show like, hey, in these past four years, I think this proves that I was able to make that change, which was with one of the organizations that I was involved with, which, which was a, uh, a national honors fraternity, which is very focused on um, education and, you know, kind of giving back to uh, the campus community. They nominated me to run for homecoming court. And when I, you know, when they first nominated me, my, my heart dropped. I was like, <laughs> you know, in my head, I was like, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I remember high school prom. Like, I, 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 I didn't even go to my prom back in high school because I was so terrified of it. And I was like, the moment that my heart sank, I, I said, yes. I was like, of course. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll give it a shot. You know, one thing went to another. Um, I, I ended up going to an interview, doing my presentation. I make it to court. And, you know, being on homecoming court was already amazing to me. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm with some of the top people of, of the university right now. You know, you, you have to go through a set of interviews and they don't just let anyone be on court. Um, but I'm like, okay, yeah, this is, this is great. You know, I, I already made it. <laughs> uh, you know, the week goes by and, you know, we're, we're kind of like, you know, pushing out our names, me and my partner to, to see if we can get people to vote for us. And uh, the big day comes and I end up, winning homecoming king um for my whole universe <laughs> and i i i i can't believe that you know like I'm, I'm, I'm on there they crown me and it was a very surreal moment because i was like oh my gosh i <laughs> i i i just again it wasn't like i was planning anything it just kind of happened and it wasn't until a day after that I really realized what this meant to me. You know, it wasn't just, oh, I got on court. Oh, I won, you know, like, okay. Cause I, <laughs> I don't know if it's because of all the things that I want to do. You know, I, I, obviously, I try to stay humble, you know, it's like, this is a really cool opportunity. I'm very grateful for it, but I did have to take a second um, to realize like, I, I made a change in my life. I like, I just won homecoming King from my university when four years ago, I was too afraid to go up, um, you know, on the chalkboard and write something in front of class. And that just, to me, was one of the greatest, you know, markers or, or you know, biggest accomplishments to show like, hey, you know, if you, you can take, if I was able to do it, anyone can do it. Someone who was shy, someone who was incredibly quiet, if I was able to take four years of my life and, 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 and change myself into someone that I'm proud of to eventually win Homecoming King, um, I think anyone can. You know, I, I think anyone can. It's all just about putting in the time and, and putting in the, you know, the, the hours of, of feeling uncomfortable to make that change. There's 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 a lot that goes into it. You know, it wasn't just that talking to people. Um, I think it's so important that, you know, we reflect back on that before we talk about from that point to what you're doing now, which just so everyone's listening, this is the beginning of the rock star story, not the end. So a beautiful beginning. 
And I think that everyone who's listening, I just encourage you to not be afraid to get uncomfortable. So I keep hearing that theme with you over and over. And everyone that I know that it's not only super successful, success is great, I get it, but being happy, being in healthy relationships, challenging yourself mentally, physically, you know, pushing yourself to do new things. The only way you have a full, rich life is if you're willing to get uncomfortable. And that's the thing that I just can't drive home enough that you just, you know, you synthesize so well through that story. And from there, a lot of people would go, oh man, that's great. Okay. So that was it. That was your big moment. Uh, <clears throat> you're done. And I would like for you to just keep walking us through now from that moment. And, uh, you know, one thing I would like to share again is, is we've talked several times and I spoke at Western Michigan, you know, the four years you were there and, and you and I had interactions and we had a big program that we flew a woman up from Australia. So, so we, we, we flew a woman in from Australia and she was going to do a three day program along with my wife, Elle, who is an actress and a coach and a, you know, a business consultant. And, um, they were, we we're going to do something called speakable you. And it was for people that are mostly business people or people that wanted to be a speaker. They were going to come spend three days intensive with L and this other woman from Australia. And, I was thinking about you, and we talked on the phone, and it literally was, I'm, I'm talking maybe five days. It was literally like five days before the program, and we were talking through your work schedule and your life schedule, and you know, you'd have to drive, and could you get there, and could we do something maybe on kind of a scholarship -y thing, because I was really wanted you there. So to me, part of the inspiration of this is the timeline and the hours that you put in to get there and to leave. So, so I, I'm talk, I call you on the phone. Hey man, how's it going? Woohoo. Listen, I have this opportunity. What do you think? And you say, yes, yes, yes. And you hang up. Give us what happened after you hung up. Um, well, I think obviously it, it's one of those things where like, even though I've, I've, I've made all these changes and it's made certain things a little bit easier on me. Um, that fear was still there, you know, that, that's something that I think that's, that's kind of important to note. Like the fears, it didn't disappear, but it, it's a lot easier to manage. And I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, honestly though, even though the fear was there, I was just so excited for the opportunity because it was, it had to do with my dreams and with my goals that I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to just go there and, and be at this seminar. Cause this is what I want to do with my life. And this is going to take me one step closer. I have this amazing opportunity. Um, no matter what gets in front of me, I'm going to go for it. You know, I'm going to make it work. And, you know, I think it was, was it in Cincinnati? Is yep. Cincinnati. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, and I was in, you know, I'm Kalamazoo, Michigan. So I started looking at some of my options and <laughs> I, I wasn't necessarily in a place where I could just, you know, I don't know, um, stay there for a couple of days. You just financially, I was like, planning this out appropriately. I will drive down there. <laughs> I will drive down there, uh, stay there for one night at a hotel and just leave the very next day. You know, um, I, cause again, like I'm a college student, I don't have all the money in the world, but like, I'm going to make this happen. Um, so the very next day I, I, I booked into some different hotels room, I hotel rooms, I, I booked a room for the night and then that was it. Now I remember uh, the first the first day was an earlier day. I think it's um, they started with like a eight a.m. or something right. like that. So I had like a five to six hour drive ahead of me. I remember um, waking up at like three in the morning, getting myself ready, getting myself all dressed up, driving five hours over there, five to six hours over there by myself, going through you know the seminar. Um, you know, going, yeah, going through the seminar, going back to my hotel room once the first day was over, waking up the next day, going to part two of the seminar, which I, I'm not even sure what time it, that got out, you know, maybe a little bit past midday and driving another five hours to go back home because I had to work the next day, you know. Um, it, all of that, it, it, <laughs> I remember when I was telling you all what I had to do you were all like, Oh, like that's, you know, you did so much that, that that's crazy. And for me, it was like, 
it's nothing. This is my goal. This is my dream. Like, of course, I'm going to wake up at three in the morning, drive five hours and, and be at this, you know, eight hour seminar. Like it's, it's, it's what I want to do with my life. So it wasn't even that hard for me, really. But it was just, again, like I was going to do whatever it took to make it happen. And what would you say the impact of coming to that seminar and being around those other people, taking the content from that, because you worked through the whole seminar, uh, what would you say that did as far as the next six months after that, because you made that commitment? And that's the thing I don't think enough people see is I came, I, I drove, I did the, I was full on. It was like a master class with rock and roll people from all over the place. What was the payoff for all that work? I mean, it was amazing. I think, first of all, being able to just being there, connecting with all those different people, um, all these different you know, I love seeing the way that people think. And we had a lot of very creative minds there with different mindsets. And that was amazing. Um, so just that day in and of itself, meeting all those people, looking at all these different perspectives was great. But what followed after, which was I now kind of had this place to start um, with making a speech and, you know, potentially ma- having this dream of being a motivational speaker actually happen. Um, so from there, it was just, you know, looking back on that moment, um, thinking about my story, redefining my story and think, how is it that I want to share this with the world? You know, how is it that I want to make this dream come true? Well, that leads us directly into how you're doing that now and how you're reaching so many people right now and how I'm so excited to share this with all of our listeners because talk to us a little bit about the pandemic. (laughs) So we have choices to make when that happens. And you made some very, very conscious choices. And I want to direct everyone to those choices so they get to enjoy some of your inspiration. But tell us a little bit about pandemic fatigue that hit everybody. And then again, a mindset, doing the hard thing, and you starting your YouTube channel, TikTok, all Instagram, all the things you're doing. Give us a little bit of that and don't be afraid to throw in how a healthy relationship with somebody you care about so much also drives that now, because I know that's part of your life as well. Definitely. Definitely. Oh man, there's so much there. Um, well, let's see, obviously, you know, the, the pandemic hit. So, uh, honestly for me, uh, being someone who I, I always had these, right. I'm, I'm going through college. I'm taking my classes. I'm, I'm, I'm working and I'm doing all these different things, but the wanting to make a YouTube channel and wanting to share content through that medium was always kind of there. Um, I had let go of that dream for a little bit while I was going through college, because for a while I was like, Oh, that that's not realistic. You know, like I I had seen other people doing it and I was like, I have to get lucky. I have to do all these things. And I was like, Oh no, I need to get myself a a big boy job. I, I need to go for something that's more reasonable or something that's more doable. And like I said, over those four years of college, when I decided to change and grow, this was the pandemic hit right after I, uh, you know, after winning homecoming and all that, you know, I, I graduated with my bachelor's degree and I was going to do two more years um, to get my master's degree, which is right now I'm, you know, finishing that up. And that's a master's degree in communication from Western Michigan. Isn't that correct? Yep. Yep. Correct. Absolutely. Um, so right around that time was when the pandemic hit. And I had more time. So I was like, okay, great. Now that I have more time, um, what do I want to do with it? I I, I was actually a little bit excited at first because I had more time to do some of the other things I love, which was making videos and creating content. And then from there, I thought, okay, why is it that two, three years ago, I thought that this wasn't something that was doable, that this wasn't something that I could follow? Um, At the end of the day, like I have this goal, I have this dream why not, you know, go for it and, and do it. Like we, we're, we're just stuck at home all day, 24 seven. Like I'm going to take this time to put in the hours and, you know, make my videos and, and, and perfect them and, you know, share my content with the world. Um, but it, it was, it was a little bit of a hard time, obviously, because, you know, the world was kind of falling apart, but I thought I can either sit here, watch TV and wither away <laughs> or I can do something, right? I mean, I can create something. So I decided to take that time while everyone was in hibernation to try and come out a better person, you know? 
Um, physically, I did a lot of things to try and like change my diet. Um, but I think the biggest thing was mentally, you know, a lot of my friends in college, um, or, you know, not even just friends, but people that I knew were like, this is great. You know, I can wake up late, you know, flip on over, uh, turn on my camera and just, oh, I'm in class from bed and then just watch TV for the rest of the day. And I was like, what I did <laughs> was, you know, maybe some days I woke up a little bit later and, and did the same. But what mattered is after that, I took the time to create something, you know, to make my videos, to try and, um, because like, like you said, like I, I, it's not like right now I can go and practice speeches in front of thousands of people, right? Um, so I said, this is, this is what I want to do. I'm going to start making videos, um, sharing parts of my life, sharing various things that I've learned, um, and, you know, put it out there. Tell everybody where they can find that. Where can we find these videos? Give us, give us the places to go check you out. There's uh, the two most common places that people will be able to reach them at um, are Facebook and Instagram. I post all of my videos there too. So that will be easily accessible to some people. And what, what will they look under to find you? Of course, would be uh, Wolfpack NR. If y'all just put in Wolfpack NR, you're going to be able to see a, a lot of my videos that I've posted. I, I try to post a video every week. But if you want to find all of my videos that I've made since then, you can go to YouTube and search my name. Now, the YouTube algorithm hasn't recognized the Wolfpack as uh, a channel yet, just because when I first created the account, you know, I, it was my name. It was Noe Rizzo. Um, so right now, if they search on YouTube Wolfpack, it's not going to show up. But if they go to YouTube and they search my name, which is Noe Rizzo, N-O-E space R-I-Z-O, and my channel is going to be the first thing to pop up. And, and obviously, we're going to throw, uh, you know, in the comments or, or in the... Uh Actually, in the show notes, obviously, we're going to put all the links to all of your stuff so everybody can click on those and check that out as well. So um, if you want inspiration, if you want to watch a crazy guy having a crazy time enjoying his life during the pandemic, I just highly recommend you go check these out. It's very inspirational, but the reason I really wanted you on the show is I want you to give us some of your tips and tricks for a lot of people are still stuck. A lot of people are, you know, we're trying to come out of the pandemic, but I've been isolated. So when you think about the way you felt in high school, that isolation, afraid to talk to people, afraid to interact, there's a whole new community of people right now that are dealing with that, even though maybe before they didn't, but they've been isolated for almost a year now. And so we're opening our doors again. We have to walk out and greet our neighbors. Give us some of the ways that they might, you know, in their mind, think about how to do that, even though they know they're going to be uncomfortable. Um, how is it that you did it? And share that with us. So hopefully our listeners can, you know, implement that or share this with a son or a daughter or uh, a husband or a wife or a partner, anybody that's dealing with this right now would love to know if you have any advice for those folks. A hundred percent. I would have to say that the biggest thing is your mindset. Um, it has to come from you. It has to come from inside you choosing that you are going to make this change because at the end of the day, nobody else is going to step in and push you outside or make you do anything. The moment that you look inside yourself and say, I'm going to make this change or I'm going to make this decision. I think that's when it's going to get a lot easier for you and you will be able to make things happen. Um, but at the end of the day, that's the, that's the biggest thing that I think people, or at least that, that's the biggest thing that changed me, right? Me saying, I'm going to make this change. Um, I'm going to do whatever it is that I can to get there and trial and error. I mean, like, don't stop. It's, it's going to make you feel uncomfortable. You're, you're going to have to do things that make you uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, if you want to grow and you want to change, that's what you're going to have to do. But mindset is the biggest thing. I the biggest thing about like my my Wolfpack channel and and the community that I'm trying to build is I want to talk to those people who are at the brink and ready to make that change. Because at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of people. I don't want to be chasing after people and trying to convince them to make the change because I I've I've met people like that, you know, and and, and you can't change everyone. But 
I think what we should focus on, focus on is the people who are ready to make that change, are excited, because that excitement and, and that vision that they have is what's going to help them, you know, make that change or, or push themselves to, to go out there and do something. So um, for anyone who is just indoors and has felt isolated, insecure, not ready to do anything, um, why is it that you want to? Why is it that you're even giving this uh, um, thinking about it? What do you want to do? And focus on that. Focus on that goal. You know, have that be your your driving factor. Love it. Love it. I am part of the Wolfpack all the way. Tell our listeners, what does Wolfpack mean? Where did it come from? What's the origin of Wolfpack? Definitely. So, uh, for one, I've always loved wolves. Um, but there's, there's a lot more to it. Because when it comes down to it, um, the Wolfpack is a family. All right? Especially being, being a wolf, that is why it's not the lone wolf or, or, or the, it's, it's the wolf pack because we're a family, we're a group of people um, thinking about it in terms of like, you know, nobody, you don't really want to go through this life alone, right? You want to have your family. You want to have this group of people who think the same. And what I want this to turn into is <clears throat> a community of people who want to be their best selves, grow in any way um, that they can or that they may want to. And is accepting of others, is accepting of everyone, and helps people achieve whatever goal, whatever change they have. Uh, the cool thing about being a wolf, though, is if need be, you can be a lone wolf. All right, if you need to go off on your own, change, develop, grow, we're also going to be here for when you come back. Um, and I think that's why I love this this metaphor of being a wolf pack. Your family is always going to be there, but if you need to go and do some things and grow on your own. Just remember, you are still your own wolf, right? We, we, we have your pack here to, to help you grow. But at the end of the day, you are your own person. And there will be times that you will have to leave the pack to go through, do things on your own. But when you come back, we're always going to be here for you. Love it. So here's a question that I get a lot. And that is, you know, how do you have this attitude? I mean, you're exhausting me, man. I mean, where, where does this come from? Where does this energy come from? Don't you have bad days? Don't you? Have... So one of the questions that I get a lot is that question, and you're going to get that more and more. And so that's the question I have for you. What do you do on a daily basis? What about when you wake up and you're not in a good mood? What is it that you do? Is it listen to music or is it, you know, how do you shift that thinking to make today count? To say, I'm living the dream today because I get another day on the planet. What do you do to, to have that mindset. Very important for our listeners to hear. Yeah. Um, it, it's always interesting because nothing's ever as black and white, right? When it comes down to it, I think it's a little bit about what you said. You, you have to find what's going to be your thing. I, I know that sounds very, I might sound very basic, but you have to find what is your thing that's going to help you get through the day. For me, I know my biggest thing is I, I am I can, I can do pretty good at uh, motivating. I have a very positive mindset. So I, I know that if I'm, because that happens, I have bad days. There's, there's days that I wake up and I'm like, I, don't, I just, I'm not ready for it today. <laughs> um, and I think it is important to know when to take breaks, to know when to give yourself a little bit of that time to, to recoup. But the biggest thing that gets me through it is just knowing that I'm going to get out of it. You know, like there's a yin and yang. There's a balance to life. Like, obviously, you got to have those down moments to appreciate the good moments. So when I'm in a down moment in the back of my head, I'm still like, you know what? I know that I'm going to be fine later. Like, it's going to get OK. And then when I make it to that place mentally and I'm feeling better or I'm getting work done, I'm like, yes, like this is what I was waiting for. This is why I have that mindset, because I knew that I was going to get to this point. But I had to be in that low point to appreciate this more. And other like steps, like every day I do these three things. I try to, you know, <clears throat> do some more of it, you know, and, and I'm going to do the cliches, you know, eat right, drink water, exercise, tell someone you love them. You know, those are kind of daily affirmation kind of things people say. Do you have something like that? Or is it just every day is a new beginning? Or, you know, for our listeners, I like to give them some tangible things to help create that change. Do you have any formula or any ideas on that? Again, I, I think it's it's different for everyone and, and, and you have to find it yourself uh, because there's times that I think it's all about like seeing where you're at in life because I, I do work out, you know, and I, I do eat healthy. 
Um, finding, I, okay, I think this, this is what, I, we'll go with this. Finding the correct balance in your life, right? No, nothing, it, it, it's too hard to say like, oh, just follow this formula and everything is going to be perfect because I think some days you're going to need more self-care than others. Some days you're going to have to work harder than other than others. So I think what I would want people to know, at least for my message, is find the thing that works for you. You know what I mean? Like if, if some days you need to wake up a little bit later and stay up working a little bit harder later the next day, that's okay. Find what works for you. Um, I have to jump in here because I know, again, it's about getting uncomfortable. And I know wolves are freaking meat eaters, man. Wolves rip carnage. Arr! On the other hand, you as the wolf pack leader decided to do something very different just as a challenge for yourself Tell us about what it meant when you said, you know what, it's a new year and not that it's New Year's, but I'm just going to try something different and I'm going to see what happens if I go vegan, even though you're a wolf. What was that like and what's that been, what's that road been like? That was crazy. Um, well, let's see. I think it, it, it started with me opening my, my mind a little bit to this idea of being vegan and what that means to a lot of different people. So first it was kind of finding like, why is it that I want to do this? What, you know, why is it that I want to try this new thing? Um, but after I kind of, you know, figured out my reasons for it, it was, it was easier, you know, because I, I had this mentality of no, like I'm doing it because I believe in this or I'm doing it because I believe in that. So you answered your why. I answered my why. That that is such a big thing, you know, because if if your why isn't strong enough, you're not going to follow through with things. If if you don't have a big enough reason to make a change, you are not going to commit to that change. I promise you that. Um, figuring out my why and coming back down to it has helped me with everything. Uh, being vegan, yeah, that that was hard. <laughs> it, it 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 was a very hard change at the beginning. Um, but again, it was just this idea of, I want to see what this is going to do for my life. I'm going to see how much it's going to benefit me. Um, life, I think it's because of those, all of the change that I've done in my life that I'm constantly looking for new things to challenge myself with. You know, it, it wasn't like what you said, like once it wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm, I won homecoming king and that was it. It's about the journey. It's about everything that happened to me leading up to that moment that I, I was able to take that with me so that now that I'm graduated and I'm doing all these different things, that mindset's already there. That mindset of, of making myself uncomfortable, trying out new things. That's the biggest thing that, that, that pushes me, I guess. And I would, I would say, like, try and, and, and do that. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, you know, it, it, it helps with everything, I think. <laughs> So I, I have to just, again, share with all the listeners, it's really important that we can say, this is what's next. It doesn't mean it's what's forever. And that's something I think you have a, such a great perspective of. And that is, you know what, I'm going to just see what it's, what. let's just go down the path, commit to X amount of time to be vegan. And it doesn't mean I can't go back. It doesn't mean steak disappeared from the planet and I'm never going to get to have it again. It just means... I'm going to make this choice. I'm going to see what it does for me physically, mentally, emotionally, and how it makes me, what my big why is. I don't know what your why is. We don't need to know. Everybody needs to find their own why. So that's great. But the concept that I'm going to, for instance, I worked on cruise ships for a few years and it was a six month contract. And prior to that, I thought that was going to be the rest of my life. I'm going to go on a cruise ship and I'm never going to see my friends again. My life is going to be over forever. I did my first six month contract. I came back and within two days, it was like I never left. Everybody said, oh, good to see you again. And then it was like I never left. So I learned a valuable lesson that you can go on adventures. You can be gone for a year. You can go and, you know, study abroad for a year or two and come back. And everybody else, they pretty much didn't change much. And you can zoom right back into that life you had before if you want to. And I think that's a, a relief when you think about things like going vegan just to see what it's like. Do you agree with that? Is that a fair statement? Oh my gosh, 100%. Well, I could not agree with that more. I think that is such a big thing. Like knowing that anything that you try and anything that you try to make it, it's not, it doesn't have to be permanent. That's the thing. Um, 
I don't know if there can be this negative connotation to trying because they're like, oh, well, you shouldn't try. You should just do it. I, you know, there's a balance to everything. Um, I say, don't be afraid to try new things. Do it for as long as you think it's working for you and, and really commit to it, you know? Um, and, and like you said, don't, don't be afraid of uh, going back on that or, or deciding like, okay, I tried making this change. It didn't work. Maybe make that pivot, make that, that slight adjustment, but you don't have to completely let go of it. You don't have to completely look at it as like a failure. Oh, I tried going vegan and I failed. No, if maybe you tried going vegan and it didn't work for you, but because you did that, you now have this newfound love for veggies in a weird way, or, or you, you've discovered something new about yourself. You know, I would, I, I just have to throw in. So when you go check out Wolfpack, what you're going to find is you're going to find some really old videos, some videos that, uh, you know, Noah did a long time ago. And then he said he went away from it. So just like we're talking about, he did it, he tried it. He got a certain amount of joy out of it. And he said, you know what, this isn't going to blow up. And at that time, his goal was to have a million subscribers or, you know, be, be a YouTube star or whatever. So it didn't happen. So we went away from it. Then he grew a little, he got a little older, he had some more experiences. And then he said, you know what? Now I need to do videos because I have messaging I need to put out in the world. And if one person hears it and it makes their day and I didn't do it, then I'm a loser. I need to give what I have to give for one person or 40 million. And I'm telling you, when you go watch his videos now, look at the video production, look at the passion he has, look at the delivery. And it's all because now he's doing it for all the right reasons. And that's why I want you to check it out. Again, would you agree with that? Going to this whole try it and it didn't work. Guess what? Now I have a different why. I'm going to go back and I'm going to kick its ass now. It's going to be amazing. That's that's the feeling I get when I watch them. Do you agree with that? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I think again, like not to sound too cheesy or anything, but life is a journey. You know, like you have your own story, you have your own book, right? And you know, it, it, that was one chapter. I tried doing something, I, I I mixed it up, but I was never afraid to come back to it. If anything, I was more excited because I was like, I have all this new knowledge, I have all these new experiences that I can share. I have this different attitude going into it. Um, and I think what you said is such a big thing now that I think is is different for me now than it was then, which is now it's not about honestly for me right now, it's not about the numbers necessarily. Like it's not about, oh, I need this amount of followers or this amount of people watching it because I need to make money from it someday. Right now, the goal is to just share the message and, and help people. And I'm done stressing out about whether it blows up or not, because at the end of the day, those messages are there. And when, you know, if the right people see it, that, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Someday those messages, those messages are always going to be there. And whenever someone needs it, and when the time is right, they might stumble across upon it. And that's all that, you know, matters to me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, your message will be heard by millions of people. You will be on stages. I've seen you on stage. I've seen you perform. I, I know what's in your heart. And the great thing about being a speaker is people can read you. And if you're authentic and you're real and you're there because it's not about you, it's about them, you can't not succeed. You have to succeed because everybody wants help to navigate and not that you're just like me, not that you're like a guru or you have all the answers and I'm a sage, that's all crap. But what you do have is you have authenticity and you want to give and you want to give what you have, whatever that is. It's not everything, but whatever I have, I want to give. And so you will be sharing from a stage, from many stages, and you'll be saying, by the way, if this is your little roadblock right now, you can go to Wolfpack and you can go to number 27 and you'll see there's a video there and it's going to help you through that little portion of what you're going through. So even though you may be putting them up right now and there may be, I don't care, seven people looked at it down the road from now, five years from now, three years from now, you're going to be on a stage and you're going to be able to share that. And some of those people are going to be inspired by you live. And they're going to go back and all of a sudden more and more people are going to be helped by the content you're putting out now. And that's the thing that I want to share with everyone as we wrap up. And that is it's not too late 
for you to decide what it is you want to do coming out of the pandemic, coming out of that time that you had to sit and think and the time you had to really have self-reflection. I think it's kind of an amazing thing that the whole world kind of shut down for a year and everybody had to take a little time to remember what's really important in their lives. And if you need a little oomph, if you need a little punch in the stomach, if you need a little inspiration to take that that you've been thinking about and now go actualize it, I'm telling you, go check out Wolfpack and some of that content will be there. And uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you spending the time to be on the program with us and sharing your, your thoughts and your messages. And as you now project the next chapter... Tell us what we can do for you or tell us what the next six months, year and a half. I know you're getting your master's degree in communication. So where do you see yourself? What is what is the next big dream, goal, aspiration in your life moving forward? Share that with us and maybe in some way, shape or form, some of our listeners can help actualize that in your life. I think the, the, the biggest way that people can help right now and, and the goal, you know, is, is still what I talked about, which is this is what I want to do with my life. I want to be able to share my messages. I want to be able to spread, you know, the things that I've learned. So uh, going into my, my different social medias, you know, going into YouTube, uh, being, going into Instagram, going into Facebook, you know, Twitter, whatever it may be. Uh, giving me a follow and listening to those messages. I want, I want the viewers to listen to those messages. And even if they don't have something uh, that they, they feel like they can get from it, maybe they know someone who does. So being able to, you know, just watch those videos, see what they can get from it and share it to other people. That, that, that would be the, the biggest help, you know, honestly, because ultimately, um, I mean, obviously, if I'm able to get enough people, this can be what I can do for a living, you know? Um, and that's, it, it's what I want to do and just want everyone else, everyone to know that, uh, whether or not I, I do end up, you know, someday making enough money off of just these videos to do this for a living, I'm not going to stop. You know I mean? I'm, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to be out there. The wolf pack is going to be there doing its thing, accepting new people, accepting new members at any time. Um, but the biggest way that y'all can help is just help grow the community, share the videos, enjoy the videos. Um, See what you can get from it. Love it. So before we shut off, uh, it's really important. So in my program, I do, uh, you know, speaker, best-selling author, you know, all this speaker boy stuff in the beginning. And then I teach everyone to juggle and all the things you've seen. But I always end my program with the resume and the resume. And the resume is all the things we've been talking about and, and some resume in there. But I'd love for you now to go back a little bit and share a little bit of your resume and share a little bit of the stuff that you dealt with maybe growing up. Tell us about your past. Tell us about your family. Tell us a little bit that maybe we haven't heard so far because I think there's a whole journey. And what happens to so many successful people is as they get to these things, these little benchmarks, they get amnesia about where they started in the journey they've been on. And I think that that's an important thing to end our program today with you telling us a little bit about your journey, your early years on the planet. Of course. Um, so let's see. I was actually born in Mexico City. Um, I, I was born there, but the year that I was, I, I lived there for one year and then we moved to the United States, me and my family. Um, lived in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas for like six years. And then we moved back to Mexico and lived there another six years. And then now I'm in Michigan another six years later. I've been, I've been around, you know, I've been jumping back and forth between the United States and Mexico uh, for the majority of me growing up. And I think that's something um, <clears throat> which I now view as a blessing, but at first it was a little bit complicated. I, I didn't really have what some people would say uh, a home or, you know, a hometown, because I was always moving. And when I was younger, that was incredibly scary. And I and I hated it, because it was like, right when I felt like I was finally getting to a place where I was making some friends, and I was building a life, it got taken away, and I had to go somewhere else. Um, so I don't know if maybe that 
plays into a little bit why me growing up in high school, I was so, so shy. Who knows? Maybe I was afraid to get close to people because of this or that. Um, but yeah, some, I think growing up in my journey, you know, one of my biggest hardships, which I think now is also one of my biggest strengths is that I, I can be very emotional. Um, I, I take things to heart, you know, really, really seriously. And, uh, I think that's something that while growing up has been really hard, but also being able to recognize that I can use that as my strength, you know, me being someone who feels so much, I can use that same passion for whenever I get hurt or whenever I get down to bring people up, to motivate people, to, you know, get people excited and to get myself excited. So again, looking at those, those downfalls and whatever it is, that you feel like you struggle with how what's the other side of that what's the strength to that how can you turn that into a good thing for you so. wow i i'm so inspired and it's so uh great to talk to you and i think you know me on the outside watching the growth and watching all the things you've been doing and just getting able to hang out with you for a couple of days at the seminar and um, it's just been, you know, you've been a blessing to me and my family as well. So I appreciate your friendship. And I would also just say, it's interesting how, when you are moving from Mexico city and then you're all of a sudden you're, you're in the United States and you're kind of an outsider a little bit, then you move back to Mexico and now you're this American kid and you're a little bit outsider. Then you move back and now you're Mexican. And so it's funny because all of those things, all those times, and you know, I've moved a lot in my childhood as well, and I have dyslexia, so I was in special ed, so I completely understand all of those feelings. But what's beautiful to me is you took all of that and said, you know what, I'm going to change that, and I'm going to create a wolf pack, and I'm going to place something in the world that anyone that feels that way, for whatever reason it is, Here's a place for you to come and be safe and a place for you to fit in. And there's a, there's a space for everyone in the wolf pack. And that's what you've created. And I hope by our listeners and I hope by your journey, many more people are able to find that warm place they feel at home. And uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you putting that out and being on our show today. And uh, keep living the dream, my brother. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, two, two more things to add. Yes. Um, uh, just one last little, little shout out as you all are joining the Wolfpack family. Um, another way that you can help support is by maybe buying some merchandise, <laughs> uh, on my Instagram handle and on most of my YouTube videos in the description, y'all can join and buy uh, either a hoodie or a shirt. And that will be another step to being a part of the Wolfpack family, feeling like you are one of us. Um, so that's another way you can help. But what I would like to end it on is just even this moment for me is, is so surreal. Just think about it in the same way that when I, you know, first graduated from high school and then got to the point where I, you know, went homecoming king and that showed something to me. When I six years ago, when I first saw you on stage, how was I to know that six years down the line, you would reach out to me and ask me to be a guest on your podcast? That is mind blowing to me. And I am so grateful and so happy. And I want all the listeners out there, let this moment once again, show that you all can do anything that you want to do. You know, here I am talking to one of my biggest inspirations that helped me get here. Um, and it's just because I kept I kept doing my thing. <laughs> I just kept going for for the dream and and you know, I'm I'm living it. So That's awesome. Thank you. And just so you know, I'll be the first one in line to get some of that merch. I saw the the shirts and I saw the hoodie and I will be uh doing a video wearing that hoodie. Trust oh, me, God. it's killer. So, yeah. everybody check that out. Thanks again. Thanks for everybody for listening and get ready because we're about to talk about the 24 hour challenge. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Well, I don't think I've ever had an easier 24 hour challenge or an easier one to know what I want it to be. And that is in the next 24 hours, of course, I want you to go and check out Wolfpack on YouTube, but I don't want you to just be an observer. I want you to actually go and be 
active in order to help Noe make his dreams come true. So as you watch the video, I want you to know some of you, it might be a little too fast, a little too fast paced. It's because it's geared for a certain audience. So I want you to watch it, watch a couple of them. Then I want you to comment, you know, give it a thumbs up and comment. And the last thing I want you to do is I want you to think about somebody that you know that would benefit from watching and listening to his messaging. So that's the 24 hour challenge. Go give him a thumbs up, make a comment, share it with somebody else. Thank you for listening. And of course, keep living the dream.